Hi, my name is Dennis, founder of Prep Matter. And for those who don't know me, I've spent about four years at BCG and then moved to a boutique firm. And today I have Lorenzo with me, uh, another colleague of mine at a boutique firm that I worked at. And today we're going to talk about why boutique firms may not be the best fit for you. Let's get started. All right, Lorenzo, welcome. Thank you. All right, so um, why don't we first start with some of the positives of uh, boutique firms? Where do you want to start? Sure. Yeah, happy to talk to that. So I think for me personally, one of the major positives is in terms of career progression. So I tend to think that a smaller boutique is typically able to promote successful sort of good candidates um, a lot quicker than, than perhaps a more established firm. Um, it, it's partly due to a number of, I think, different reasons. In the first place, I would say having more uh, promotion windows. Um, that's something that, that definitely was the case where, where I worked previously. Um, but also it could be a way of, um, of rewarding good talent and, and making sure that it doesn't leave the firm. Yeah, I remember that uh, when we studied together at Cambridge, right? Then after this, I joined Carney, then BCG. And then just about four, four and a half years later, I actually joined you at a boutique firm. And at that time, uh, you already made it to manager. And at BCG, I was only at a consultant level. So it actually surprised me that, you know, a boutique firm was able to promote in such a pace, uh, pace and manner. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's probably, in the way I see it, it's related to the level of responsibilities that you typically take on board in a, in a boutique firm. So typically in, in a boutique, you might be expected to go, go the extra mile a little bit more often than, than you might in a more sort of structured environment. So... I think related to that is is just the whole concept of picking up those extra responsibilities, and if you can prove yourself um, while you're taking these on, then it just makes it a lot uh, a lot easier, and 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 just makes it more of a how can I put it a, a better way of justifying your promotion case once uh, once the time comes during moderation. Yeah, absolutely. Just to add on that, uh, when I joined the boutique firm, um, it was great that I was already staffed on a project where I was almost a one man team. And um, I worked directly with the head of the office, which was an amazing experience because at BCG, I was usually part of a bigger team of three to five, which is amazing. You, you own the whole module. But when you join a boutique firm, you tend to own the entire project. Yeah. At least this is what I've seen. Yeah, exactly. And I would say that level of responsibility also stretches beyond projects. Um, so definitely this was the case in, in my experience. I was involved in onboarding and training. Um, in a number of different areas as well. And, and and really, it kind of gives you, I think, good opportunity to see what happens often behind the scenes or sort of outside of the um, the project world. Okay, so what kind of things have you worked on besides the projects? Yeah, so I was heavily involved in, in recruiting um, and, and training as well. Um, so recruiting would be from the likes of, you know, all the way through from CV screening to actually uh, interviewing candidates. And, and it even included interviewing candidates that would be joining the firm at a much more senior level than I, mm -hmm. um, because naturally having um, a positive culture in the team is very important, particularly for a boutique. Uh, and so they would often have more junior uh, consultants uh, have informal interviews and conversations with uh, potentially more senior hires into the firm. Yeah, so it's interesting you said about the interviewing because something interesting was, you know, at BCG, uh, they typically train uh, people from C2 level onwards. But as I was leaving BCG, I was just about to get my promotion as a consultant. So I wasn't really fully trained at BCG. But then as I joined the boutique firm, literally almost two, three weeks after I joined, I found myself uh, in the interview uh, room and I was already interviewing candidates, which taught me a lot and is something that I'm actually using at Prep Matter during my coaching sessions with people. Yeah, I think it's it's also a case of being having to be a bit more nimble and entrepreneurial yeah. um, as, a, as a boutique firm. So it, it, it touches on the things that we've just discussed, but also more broadly, uh, you can, you can, I think, decide the direction of where you want to, um, where you want to go a little bit more. Um, could be in terms of chasing market opportunities if you're a senior, uh, senior consultant uh, looking to sort of pitch and, and win project work. You have a bit more of a say in terms of how to navigate that within, within a smaller firm. Yeah. Well, we talked a lot about positives right now. Uh, is there anything else you want to add or shall we flip uh, the coin and then talk about why it may not be the best fit for everyone? Yeah, no, let's, let's flip the coin. Okay, so let's just first talk about as a new joiner uh, at a boutique firm. And because usually boutique firms are 
um, a bit smaller than MBB, um, you don't have as much flexibility in terms of the type of projects that you can work on. But of course, as you get more senior, you can actually drive the agenda. But this was at least my observation. Would you agree? Yeah, exactly. I think I think you've also got to be careful in a in, in a boutique, and this is not the case for all boutiques. But you know, naturally, it's a it's a consideration that I think uh, you should make before joining potentially a boutique. Is that certain boutiques will only focus on specific project sectors. Others will focus on specific types of mm -hmm. projects. Um, and so you have to be comfortable with the fact that you may not have as broad uh, brush and experience as you would in a much more established uh, firm, which has many more sectors, many more types of projects um, to, to be able to staff you on. Yeah, exactly. And also in addition to this, let's talk about the resources and capabilities. So one of the things I really liked at BCG was uh, whatever project I was working on, Per first, we had the approach in place, we had a bigger team, but maybe more importantly, we had knowledge management teams. So basically what those teams do is that they are staffed to your project already on day one, and they bring in the knowledge of BCG and other firms based on the previous projects that we worked on. So in a way, you have the documents you have available, you can reach out to some people globally, it doesn't matter where you're based, and you can actually reach out to them and you know, um, discuss a specific topic. If you need some help on for a couple of hours, they are able to help you out. And third, um, in terms of the actual external resources, I remember at BCG, I would have access to the reports that you would have to pay 5,000 pounds for. So these are some of the positives that I've seen while working at BCG, whereas in boutique firms, sometimes the resources are a little bit more limited. So you kind of have to go the hard way, perhaps like, reach out to people more individually, reach out to people over LinkedIn, uh, maybe even give them some vouchers so that they can speak to you. But things are a little harder, I believe, uh, when you're working at a boutique firm. Yeah, I think that's I think that's spot on. I think you, you have to inevitably in a boutique pick up some of that um, slack that in a much more established firm would be done centrally, done by sort of other teams. Um, and so that might include, as you say, things like um, gathering market market research reports, um, speaking to experts, which you might have internally in a larger organization, but naturally in a boutique, you're you're much less likely to have that that in house. Um, so yeah, I completely agree with that. Point. Yeah, and in addition to this, um, the other thing was more around the internal trainings. So when I um, started working at uh, Carney and then BCG, I literally had no idea about how to write slides, right, or how to build models. Yeah. And um, for example, one thing that we have at BCG is, you know, we call it lab, which is learning at BCG. And the way it works is that it is more like an internal a compilation of training materials. And you can actually um, go there and learn how to write slides. And we're going to, by the way, upload a lot of videos about this in the next couple of weeks. And you can actually learn how to build models and so on. So there is some sort of a system in place. Whereas uh, with boutique firms, it's uh, understandably, uh, it's a little bit more uh, limited. So sometimes you may have to rely on more like external resources, like go on YouTube or ask other people and so on to kind of learn this kind of uh, skill set. Yeah, I, I would say overall, it's it's a lot more unstructured um, in a boutique firm. So uh, of course, they will have some training packs and, and some training materials. And as I said earlier, I was responsible for, for delivering some of those. But ultimately, there's a lot more focus on learning on the job. Um, and, and as you say, picking up from, from other resources that might be sort of publicly available. Yeah, exactly. That's why I say that it may not be for everyone, right? So you need to really have the grit to go above and beyond to kind of, you know, learn those. Whereas in bigger firms, perhaps because things are a bit more structured, even if you don't feel like you want to go the extra mile, they make sure that you learn everything yeah, you need. Absolutely. And, um, the other thing I want to talk about is the culture. So of course it does change based on office to office, but usually boutique firms are often smaller in size compared to MBB, right? Sure. And um, one of the problems it may have, and again, these have two sides, right? Like one of them is of course, the office may be amazing. There's an amazing positive atmosphere, right? People love it and you just join that. But what happens, let's say, if there's a couple of people that may not be very easy to work with, it might impact the overall culture in the office. So it is something that I've seen uh, when I worked with a lot of trainees who want to move from boutique to MBB. And when I asked them why, this is one of the main reasons. So I would say that culture is one of those things that probably varies a lot more from firm to firm rather than from boutique to more established company, for example. I think in my experience, um, I, I really enjoyed the culture of the boutique 
firm where I worked at, we would often have sort of lunches together with uh, with junior consultants. I'm still very close friends with with a number of individuals that work there. Um, but I could say the same at, at sort of where I currently work. So um, it, it really isn't sort of a major difference necessarily. But as you say, there could be perhaps more elevated risk if um, if there are more troubled um, sort of encounters, if you will. Exactly. Okay. I think we discussed pretty much everything, right? Yep. All right. Fantastic. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this discussion as we've done. And if you did, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you in the next video.